Praise God, praise God, and welcome to this special edition of This Is My Story. I am like a kid in the candy store tonight. I'm so excited. I got a person on here. Uh, listen, I got a friend on here. I got a colleague on here uh, that you're going to be glad you shared with us tonight. Listen, I want you to like and share, tag your friends, start your own watch party, because tonight it is on and popping. As the kids say, we've got the one and only, the one and only, a master, a legend, songwriter, producer, musician extraordinaire, one of the masters in the world, uh, a legend in his own right, the one and only Dr. Wendell Lowe. And you need to get on the phone and call everybody and let them know we're going to be talking. We're going to hear his story tonight. And so we're going to be blessed. So I want you to help me, join me tonight. And let's welcome this brother, a beloved to the platform. This is my story, Dr. Wendell Lowe. Blessings, my friend. Grace and peace to you, Bishop. It's good to be here. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm telling you, man, you, when, when I contacted you, you said, yes, I'll do it. I, I, got, I just went crazy, boy, because yeah, I know how busy you are. I know how in demand you are. And for you to take this time to share with us is a blessing tonight. And we certainly appreciate your, your sacrifice and your time. You're always doing something every time we look on. And you yes, know, sir. I always tease you, man. I'll be waiting <laughs> on my organic moments, Doc. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so listen, man, uh, I, I want you to share your story tonight because I, I, I always say in this, this platform, a lot of people see your story uh, or see your glory, but they don't know your story. They don't yes, know uh, uh, from whence you come, how you come, and what it has taken, the, the sacrifices, the suffering, the all that you had to go through to get to such a place in your career. Because, man, you're one of the most sought out uh, songwriters, wow. musicians, producers that we know in our day. So I don't want you to take your time and tell us how you started and and we'll start there and go from there and talk about some other things, about the climate of the music today and the choir, the praise music and the yes, church, sir. where we're going with our music. Well, first of all, Bishop, I want to say thank you for having me on to tell my story. I've, I've been watching your show uh, for quite some time, almost as, since you, as long as you've been on and uh, hearing the other artists. So I'm very, very, very honored and humbled to uh, be on here with you, uh, having worked uh, with you in times past and you being in the great city of Detroit, 
yeah. a great motor city. And of course, I'm from Chicago, the windy city, and uh, uh, just great gospel artists, musicians that have come from both places. And I'm honored to have friends there as well as my uh, family and friends in Chicago. So it's good to be on here to share my story with you. And again, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I don't know if I can tell it all tonight because it's a whole <laughs> it, it's a whole lot. Uh, but the Lord has uh, been good to me. What you, what you want to know, Bishop? What 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 can I tell the people? Man, tell us how you got started in music, uh, your interests, and and how you started, where you first played, where you made your musical debut, uh, your yes, first record, all all of your first would, would be okay. a blessing to us. Well, first of all, I I'm born and raised in Chicago, West Side of Chicago. Uh, I was born a pastor's kid, so I'm a PK. My dad, uh, second generation pastor, his dad was a pastor, and our church, St. Titus Missionary Baptist Church on the west side of Chicago. Uh, dad took over the church called Third Baptist, 1968, the year I was born. I am the sixth child of 10 loads, and we all sing and play and even preach, you know, and so uh, uh, when I came to know my gift, I, I, I might have been maybe four or five, but uh, my, my parents say I started playing when I was two and uh, started on the piano and kind of migrated to the drums and then eventually got to the organ. Uh, I've been blessed uh, to play pretty much all my life. Uh, I was about 50 years now, to be exact. And and uh, I started playing in my dad's church. And, you know, dad back then did a lot of things uh, that went against the grain. You know, he believed in women preachers. Uh, he started paying musicians at a very early age. He, he paid me. And I'll never forget, he started me off at, uh, at uh, 10 years old, uh, paying me to play organ. And I started playing organ and getting paid for it by the church. Dr. Clay Evans uh, paid me uh, $10 a week, come and pay, play for his uh, nine o'clock radio broadcast. And I was just 10 years old. So uh, it just all started there. And, and the Lord has just blessed me to continue in the craft of music. Uh, I listened to... Luke Sonny Austin, some Church of God in Christ folks might know who he is. He, he was the one that played, uh, uh, I've had some good days, I've had some hills to climb. He played for the late great uh, Reverend James, Pastor James Lennox. That's Luke Austin on the organ, on the original uh, track. He was one of my mentors. And then the late great Leon Hooper, who was a great organist uh, who used to accompany my dad. A uh, great organist. Uh, only the greats will probably remember him from Chicago. Um, and I just began to listen to a lot of jazz, gospel, classical. You know, I, I watch uh, Saturday mornings, I would watch cartoons that had great orchestrations in their music, the Tom and Jerry cartoons. And I watched it more for the music than the actual cartoon. And I would listen to the orchestrations and the pagiations and scales and the, the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. And I began to just take interest in chords and runs and, and scales and majors and minors and all of those augmented things. And it just began to just kind of pour into this stew that began to shape my sound. So by the time I got into high school, Bishop, I, I, I was uh, just playing organ, piano, and I, my, I got called to do a live recording session by Walt Whitman and the Soul Children. So my first live recording session was uh, when they recorded uh, the, the actual title of the song is uh, Perfect Praise. You all know it as How Excellent. Oh, Lord, how excellent. So the original uh, recording, I played organ on that. Brother Walt Whitman gave me my first shot 
uh, paid me well, I want to say, and that was the soldier in Chicago. And from there, my career took off. I started playing for all of the gospel artists in Chicago, and I would be the youngest kid on the block. <laughs> Everybody I played with was just about twice my age, you know, because the uh, the gift of music had matured in such a way until I was able to kind of keep up with some of the older musicians. And so they would bring me into their bands, uh, you know, Milton Bronson and the Thompson Community Singers, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Clay Evans, uh, Chicago Mass, you know, Percy and uh, the Gray Boys, Percy Gray, Percy Beatty, you know, and so they all started bringing me in you know, Richard uh, Gibbs, uh, who was the MD for uh, uh, the, the, the queen herself there from uh, from uh, Detroit, you know? And so I, I, I'm just elated to have such a great uh, journey in this music uh, um, career thing. And, and so uh, I, I told you, it's just a whole lot to say. <laughs> you know, from there, I, I, I played with Bishop Kev, uh, Brother Kevin Bond, who, you know, Mark Taylor, who brought me in to play for Vanessa Bell, we began to get to the uh, workshops, Gospel Music Workshop of America, the Thomas Dorsey Workshop, uh, the uh, uh, Edwin Hawkins Music and Arts Seminar Workshops, and, and it, it just began to expand and grow. I was like a sponge and I was just absorbing as much as I possibly could as a young musician coming up. There were times, man, I, you know, my feelings got hurt. Well, you know, coming up in a storefront church, you know, it was just me and my brother. But when I started playing with bands, I had to calm down. I had to play to play my space. I had to learn how to play as a team player. Instead of a two piece with mouth sauce, now it's five piece, you know, and 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 I gotta play my space. Uh, or I couldn't make the band because I was too busy. So I learned to either calm down and and really master my craft and and uh, just uh, kind of advance uh, to the next level. And I began to travel then at that point. Got called by uh Doug Miller. The late Doug Miller called me and I started traveling with him and musicians. He just introduced me to a whole other plethora of musicians outside of Chicago. And it just kept getting bigger. It just kept getting bigger. It was almost every weekend I'm on a flight flying somewhere to accompany an artist, you know, national recording artist. And it's just been, it's been great. I've had the pleasure of traveling with uh, evangelists, tele-evangelists, so Juanita Bynum, Tim Story, Morris Cirillo, uh, Paul and Jan Crouch of TBN, I've served them, you know, and of course I'm currently playing for Rod Parsley, who's a tele-evangelist. I think he's been going for about 40 some years now, and uh, I've been with him almost 20 years. And so the Lord has just been good to me. I'm trying to condense it. <laughs> You know, uh, it's just been a wonderful ride. I've, I've had the pleasure of producing. I've uh, produced several choirs, uh, local choirs in Chicago. Uh, um, Bryant, Bryant Jones and his group I produce and, and, and accompany. Uh, I've uh, had the pleasure of producing Ricky Dillard and the New Generation Chorale. Uh, I've, we've gotten through about four CDs with him. And so I'm uh, very proud to say that they are sitting right there on my resume and, and very honored to have worked with him. So many different artists. I've uh, worked with, of course, the praise team at World Harvest Church. Okay. Okay, there you go. I got you back. See, see, that, that, that's what I'm saying. The call, phone call. <laughs> I don't know how to turn a do not disturb on there now. They didn't update it to phone. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, so, uh, yeah. So it's, it's just been a, a, a good ride. I've had some, I've had some touring. I was able to tour uh, Germany. 
Uh, I've done some tours in Frankfurt, Dusseldorf, uh, uh, Berlin, uh, Paris, France, uh, uh, of course, the United States. So, you know, that goes without saying, but I'll mention anyway. Uh, just uh, a plethora of uh, continents, you know, work with uh, people from Sweden. I've worked with a group from uh, Norway, done some recording with a group, the uh, Stavanger group from uh, from uh, Norway. And it's a Norwegian choir there and we work with them. So it's just been awesome. It's been awesome. And now I'm 53 and I'm trying to figure out how to retire, but uh, well uh, they won't let they won't let me retire. <laughs> That's a blessing. We, no, we ain't gonna let you do that. They won't let me retire, so you can't retire. Either. <laughs> well, if you can't retire, I know I can't retire. No, so man, I'm, we, I'm 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 right on your heels, Doc. Yeah, we 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 gotta we gotta stay out of here, man. Yes, uh, sir. Because uh, man, let, let me go back. I mean, even though you just hitting bits and pieces, and, yes, sir. Uh, but man, that's impressive because see a lot of people they see you they don't they don't know how you paid your dues. Yes, sir. You know uh, uh, to be in the posture. So when people now, because you built up your name, your reputation precedes you, and when I mean, they know they calling you, they know they getting uh, an expert quality, uh, not only in music but in character and integrity. Yes, all of that, man. You you have you have uh, become, I would call, one of the greatest influential voices uh, wow. in music today. I mean, for for musicians to really take note of. I mean, there are others, but I mean, when you mention the name of Dr. Wendell Lowe, I mean, it's it's like a household name among the who's who sure. in musicianship. And and what a joy, what a credit that is. But yes, uh, yes, it yes. didn't come overnight. That's what, you know. Absolutely not. A lot of these guys now, they 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 come on the scene this morning and want to be overnight wonders. <laughs> yes, sir. It, it's not happening. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And 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 uh, tell us about you know the uh, uh, the recording part. You you've been with this group, that group. I mean, and and every group that you've named though so far are well known uh, yes, in, in the industry as, as, as influential voices. You I mean, you talking about New G, Ricky Dillard, and my God, uh, Dr. Clay Evans yes, sir. Uh, and Fellowship and uh, working with uh, uh, the producer of producers, Kevin Bond. Yes, and sir. man, I mean, you know, what, what a joy that is, I'm sure you, you, you had some wonderful uh, experiences that that you can share with musicians in your workshops and in your time of teaching, yes, and uh, let's not forget that because I got that project here somewhere since I moved. I got it uh, uh, with with uh, Doctor Bishop, the one and only Bishop Roger Harston. That's right. Uh, that yes, project, sir. you know, man. Because when I heard y'all, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago now in Toledo at and my boy what, down there Brian with Brian Thomas. Thomas. Yes, sir. At his anniversary, man, I was I was just blown away. Yes, sir. Just blown yes, away, sir. man. At that that Bishop, uh, his whole family. I'm gonna be talking to him next week. But yes, listen, sir. man, tell us, tell us what has been the the uh, formula to your longevity because I've seen people come and seen them go, you know. But 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 the favor of God is on you that, you know, once you started, man, things just got bigger, greater, bigger from one level to the next. Yeah. And, and uh, the thing is, you're still here and relevant. That's amazing. That's Isn't amazing. that something? Wow. And, and I need you to speak to that because I think a lot of these young guys don't understand the importance of uh, the whole full package, the integrity, the study, I mean, continue to study your craft and and uh, ju just talk to us about that. So I'll, I'll deal with the integral part first. I, I learned at a very early age, you know, it, when you get called, you know, you got to treat it like 
it's your last shot, not your first. It's, you got to treat it like it's your last, like your life depends on it, which means when you get the call, you got to know the music. You, you, you got to show up on time at the rehearsal. When you come to the rehearsal, you got to know the music. You know, if you've been given the music, you know, um, and then, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm referred to as OG now. I don't know how I, how I got to that point, but, you know, a, a lot of the young musicians either referring to me as OG, Onk, uh, Pops, you know, and I try to tell them, you, you got to dress for the occasion. You know, now if they allow you to dress the way you dress, you know, that the, whatever your personality or your preference is, then that's okay. As long as what's being heard is at a level of perfection, you know, but uh, you can't always dress the way you normally dress. You know, in my case, you know, I had to wear a uniform, you know, artists preferred the band to be in uniform. Universal band uniform is all black. Mm. So I had to wear all black or whatever, you know, the uh, artist or own, uh, director uh, ask of me. And the other thing, Bishop, is that I did more listening than I did talking. Mm. I'm gonna say that again. I did more listening than I did talking. I, you know, I, I didn't talk too much. You know, I didn't name drop. I just let the gift, as the scriptures say, make room for you. And it and it did just that. I treated every artist with respect. Uh, um, and uh, I let them know that, uh, you know, if there was a question that I needed answered, I would ask the question. So I would make sure that we have an understanding on how we're conducting business, you know, times, you know, and, and, and of uh, the, uh, um, the performance, and all of that. And so I would do more listening than I would do talking. You know, now I don't know how it is in Detroit, but in Chicago, you know, there's the West side of musicians and then there's the South side of musicians, you know? And I, to me, there was no barriers. There was no boundaries. You know, I uh, I didn't disrespect or dishonor anyone. You know, it was just an honor to work with all of them, West Side musicians, South Side musicians, all alike. You know, and uh, though I'm born and raised on the West Side, uh, I ended up on the South Side, you know, and working with all of the pastors and, and, and you know, cause Chicago's got a lot of re recording church choirs. So Bishop Larry Trotter, you know, I've served under his ministry you know, of course, Dr. Clay Evans and fellowship, you know, of course, and then of course he had the pastoral fellowship, the ARC, the African-American religious connection. Well, Dr. Clay Evans took such a, 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 a liking to me because he and my dad were the best of friends. You know, he was a gospel artist and my dad was a gospel artist, you know, and, and uh, when my dad passed away, you know, he just took me under his wing. That's Lowe's boy. I'm going to take care of him. I'm, I know he comes from good stock. And he would feature me even as a soloist. I led one of his title tracks, I Constantly Thank You. Um, and the Lord just opened that door just by reason of my, my, my dad's friendship with Dr. Evans. You know, so... I built my own name and reputation by the integral parts. And then the gift just kept opening more doors because I loved what I did. I didn't really complain. I just would show up now. The older I got, the more I understood what was necessary versus what was unnecessary and coming to my own uh, um, personality and begin to kind of speak up for myself and understand, you know, uh, the difference between good business and bad business, you know, and I would just try to conduct myself as a Christian, as a saved brother, you know, in business, 
and make sure that you don't burn no bridges. You know, my dad always taught me, it's not what I, uh, what you do to me that counts, it's what I do to you, even how I respond. And so I've always kept that uh, principle to my heart and uh, it's just opened more doors and here I am today. Uh, pleasantly surprised that I'm even still relevant, but to, to the glory of God, it, it still works. <laughs> Oh yeah, it works, man. Yeah, and 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 uh, uh, very much so, and I think that's what's missing: uh, the character and integrity in in this new generation. And like you said, man, they they do us all like that, man. We yeah. old school now. We we the daddies, we the fathers, we the uncles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I don't mind. I'm like, well, good, good. We'll we'll be all of that, and we want y'all to listen. But let me ask you this, man. You've been in the industry long enough to see the industry uh, evolve and to change. And, uh, you know, when I read Billboard now, I'm, I'm like, sometimes I shake my head. I say, now, it's just too many categories of gospel music. It's just, they have just gone berserk. Let me ask your professional opinion. Do you think the industry has kind of... Um, made it where artists today have been tempted to go, as they say, cross over, leaving out Jesus and doing this inspirational thing because of their contracts and they want to put their producers on you and uh, you lose all kind of artistic control and they want you to do what they want you to do. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking and saying something you know, I know it's about the money with them, but uh, are artists selling out? What's what's going on in your in your professional opinion? You know, Bishop, I think that's a good question, and my observation ha has been that uh, it, it's kind of twofold. You know, on on one end, um, and I did a discussion on Facebook Live some time ago about this particular concern and that is we as musicians and singers particularly in the black race you know um has seemingly lost our identity wow and and in losing uh your identity going after something that causes you to walk away from what it is that you were taught, you know, it, it's easier to change a law than it is to change a culture. And so when you start dealing with cultural differences, you, you, you tend to lose your identity, you know, and, and many songs that we were raised up on were songs that go all the way back to our ancestors who were slaves and, you know, and, and the way they uh, saying, you know, uh, just to even communicate, you know, through song, you know, and, and today, you know, uh, uh, generations now later on say it don't take all of that, you know, and not, they say that because they don't really understand, you know, the depthness of the meaning. So it's, it's that piece, but it's also, uh, in, in looking at people of other ethnic groups and how the support is greater or seems to be greater to the point of, you know, a, a greater financial uh, statuses, you know, and, you know, um, will the black community, you know, pack out not just churches, but you know, football fields, you know, mm -hmm. to support gospel artists. I'm not talking about R&B or, you know, or hip hop. I'm talking about gospel, you know, and it seems like that, you know, we've tried to find our way, you know, to that financial status, because of course, everybody wants to live a lavish life. Who does it, you know, um, but getting there without compromise or without selling out and understanding what principles you uphold you know um 
so that's that's the observation that I have even today uh, that the the younger the generation or the further we go from generation to generation, the more we lose the true meaning of our culture. You know, uh, I love being a black man. I am, I've embraced it. You know, I don't try to be anyone else. I love the churchy sound, the black church. I love the groove too, you know, um, but just like there's, you know, jazz and there's blues, you know, and you can kind of infiltrate those in uh, uh, what you do, you know, it's the same B flat that we play in church. It's the same B flat they play in the church joint or in, in the lounge <laughs> or in the, it, you know, you take the lyrics away, it's still music, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and so, uh, and then on the spiritual side, Bishop, on the spiritual side, I think um, the needs change, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, the issues change, you know? Um, people are not dealing with the issues today uh, that they were dealing with back in my dad's generation. Right. And my dad being dead and gone, I don't know if my dad would be able to musically or ministry wise meet the need of people today mm. because it's different. It's different. It's more psychological than it is more spiritual. You know, and there are some artists who have to go out from the church and, as the scripture says, go into the highways and hedges and compel men. So you keep the message of Christ, though you may change the method of how you're going to reach right. artists such as rap artists, Snoop Dogg, and, you know, and, and, and how the Clark sisters have went out, you know, or... or um, Kirk Franklin have gone out, you know, just to mention a couple artists who have actually crossed over those barriers, you know, uh, uh, and, and to reach, you know, yeah. Mary, Mary, uh, not necessarily selling out. Now, of course, churches looking at them and kind of side eye, but yeah, yeah. are those souls who may not come to church, are they being reached? in today's time. So, you know, we got to be able to understand right. uh, of the importance of the need of the people in order uh, for, to be able to reach the people. The yeah. Bible says, and all that getting, get an understanding. So if you understand what the need is, then you understand what your assignment is yeah. as right. it relates to God sending you go out, you know, and, you know, into all the world, not just, mm -hmm in church, you know, although I love church, I love the sound of church, I love the structure of church, I love crystal chandeliers, padded pews, I love the organ, I love the pipe organ, I love full bands, I love the sound of a choir and a praise team. Yeah. You know, there is a significant difference, you know, and I think now people are really starting to, they're starting to actually come back to, yeah. to, to what, what was that churchy sound. you you see yeah. more artists, even our R&B artists are, are, are coming back to their roots because most of them started in church yeah. and ended up out because they were, you know, rejected by the church or declined by the church. But, you know, they never forget that. As the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go when they are old, they will not depart from it. So I think it's uh, twofold. It's spiritual and it is natural. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that, man. We... We, we've got to change the method, but the message is the same. We've yes, got to update ourselves and go. I mean, this is here. Just like we're on here now, man, we didn't have this when we started. No, sir. You know, man, if we had Spotify and iTunes. YouTube. And that, yeah, if we had all that when we was, we all probably be millionaires back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just think if yeah. James Cleveland had this, the, the Hawkins. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know. Mahalia Jackson, I mean, yeah. I mean, when you think about Thomas Dorsey. Yes, sir. They had all of this technology then, but mm -hmm. here we are. Uh, thank God we, we have uh, been touched by their lives and we stand on their shoulders. But, but let me get this question in. Philip Johnson, bless your man. Uh, I call him Dr. Phil. He, he's one Dr. of Phil. our leading musicians here in Detroit. Uh, 
awesome. He said, how did yeah. you develop your particular style? Because he said, you have a unique style. Your chords and progressions are awesome. I think yes, he's sitting at the keyboard, Philip. He might, he might, <laughs> he might help you out, you know. Uh, and yes, and we, like I say, we I be watching those organic moments, Doc. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, so <laughs> well, Philip wants you to answer that for him. Okay. So, you know, I, I tell I used to tell students when I, I taught lessons, I said, your brain is the best computer ever made. When you listen to music to enjoy it as opposed to learning it note for note. Yeah. You know, your brain will begin to store everything that your ears take in, which case in point, most musicians find themselves playing songs without rehearsal that they like. Because songs that you like, you listen to more than songs that you don't like. And so when you're able to play back a song without rehearsing, it's because you've just kind of listened to enjoy it and your brain stored it. So that principle I've applied to listening to different genres of, of music. I listen to Brazilian music. I listen to Indian music. Uh, I, I, uh, and I'm just talking about other different genres, blues, bluegrass. I listen to all of that. Um, you know, um, movie soundtracks, yeah. and then and then get into, into different artists, you know. My sound is comprised of the late George Duke, of the late Minister Thomas Whitfield, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, you know, yeah. uh, Oscar, Oscar Peterson, you know, Joey D. Francesco is still alive. I listen to him. He's a great jazz organist, you know, and so, and then I listen to these young boys. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, I listen to Mike Burrell. I listen to uh, 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 Antoine Walker here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, um, just just kind of name a few. That you know, Twinkie Clark. I listen to her, and and just comprise of different methods that they use, mm -hmm. like a big stew, and I mix it up and just kind of my approach. When I'm playing yeah. organ, I, I'm I'm using a certain approach. When I'm playing piano, I'm using a completely different approach. Yeah. And so uh, that that's how it's developed over time. Man, man, that, that's awesome. I, I never forget Tommy was telling me some things like that when he would uh, share uh, uh, some of his musical practice, uh, and 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 we would talk about that uh, because. Early on, you know, we would do sets on the weekend. Uh, there's a little place called Gross Eel, Michigan. And um, mm. we had this little singing group, little band, man. And we would do light jazz and inspiration, you know, yes, sir. all kind of music. Man, I, I find that music to be so soothing. And I, I today, we got an all uh, uh, jazz station here. Yeah. That I, I frequent, man. We got the classical station. Sometimes I listen to that. But that jazz, man, and uh, I never forget that that tune that came out by, by Roger Smith. Now. Hmm. Oh, my God. Click. And I, I used to listen to folk like Jimmy Smith. and uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 Shirley Scott. Organ, yes, old sir. jazz, or I'm, I'm going, yeah. I'm telling my yeah. age now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those jazz or. Man, that was some good stuff, though. Yes, sir. And, and a lot of that stuff I I, I got from uh, my grandfather because he had all of those old jazz recordings in his in his repertoire. I mean, he he just listened to that stuff all the time. Well, man, that's great, Philip. We hope you answered your question, man. But 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 man, talk to us about about like uh, these musicians today. Uh, our church has been shut down because of the pandemic, but how yes. do you view the climate or the uh, the music of of the New Day Church? And uh, have we forsaken sacred music? And are we being influenced musically by the world, or uh, are, are, are are we influencing the world? What's your take on that? Hmm. So. Um... 
I think we're starting to influence the world. I think, you know, as I said, the church is on its comeback, its bounce back. Yeah. You know, um, gospel music uh, serves as a, a place of, of launching, if you will, a, a, where your roots, you know, um, it, you know, it serves as a beginning, you know, and, and, and so, uh, there's a such thing called church chords. <laughs> yes, sir. That, you know, a church, yeah. you know, church chords, when you play church chords, it is a distinctive, a significant sound, no matter what instrument you're on, if you're on piano or if you're on organ, you know, if you're playing strings, you know, um, church chords use a lot of major sevens and, you know, and things like that, you know, yes. um, and, and diminishes, you know. So I think, you know, musicians, you know, are getting more of an insight of that soulful, mm. you know, um, because many of the artists are tapping into that churchy, soulful sound, yes, pop sir. artists and, 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 uh, uh, rhythm and blues artists, they're, they're tapping in. So it requires even the musicians who are operating in both genres, you know, you plan for the church and plan for, you know, a, a uh, R&B artist and, and those who are still working, God bless their heart because COVID has shut practically everybody down. Yeah. Tours got shut down, churches closed up. You know, and all we had is the uh, the internet platform, you know, to yeah. share our gifts. And I think everybody just kind of got a, a a shaking, you know, that there, there was a major shaking and it went on that that uh, just kind of hit everyone. And so when that shaking took place, uh, to me, you know, most folks called it a plague, but I called it a purging you know, and begin to kind of remind you to get back, you know, to, you know, what has sustained you and everybody sitting at home with, you know, keyboards and, you know, in home studios, and, you know, begin to just kind of go back to some of the James Cleveland and, and, and Andre Crouch, you know, and, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Hawkins, you know, yeah. going back. Yeah. So, so, um, I, I think we're, we're, it, the tables are turning again in favor of the church. Man, that's, that's, that's awesome because I, I, I tell people, I, I hope they see what I see over the last few years. You know, even uh, before Aretha Franklin passed, mm -hmm. she was doing half times at football games. I know here during Thanksgiving, she would do it for the Detroit Lions and uh, Snoop Dogg, you mentioned him yeah. when they were doing, uh, when he had Rance Allen and the Clark sisters on mm -hmm. and to see him in a choir robe was <laughs> tickled me. You know? yeah. But, yeah. but gospel music is making that transition and then of course uh, in, in a lot of movies you know, you're hearing more gospel music and yes, sir. man, I got so excited when I saw that Google commercial Jesus can work it out I said, <laughs> come on now, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, it's, it, to me, I think, I think we're, we're getting our just due. It's been, it's been a long time coming. And I think people are beginning to see the worth and the value, uh, not only of the music, but the, the people who produce the music, the artists themselves, yes, the songwriters and the producers, the musicianship that goes into uh, uh, production now, I mean, is is awesome. I yes, mean, sir. you know, years ago, man, you know, we give us a good Hammond organ, a piano and a drum, we good to go. Yes, sir. In the choir, we record the choir live. Yes, you sir. You know, and keep it moving. Yeah. But 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 we understand we, we, we've got more technical and we're in the studio and even if we do lives, we, we know how to go in the studio and 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 perfect it and uh, yes. 
to add what we need to add to it to make it a definite show enough uh, of good sound and production yes. that we all be proud of that's winning awards and being highlighted. And and man, you you one of the you're one of the guys now. We we got wow. to say it. You're one of the guys that was on the on ground level yes, to sir. help this thing happen. Uh, the musicianship, and that's why guys like Philip, and uh, a lot of times they ask. I be I get excited when they say, "Do you know so and so?" I say, "Yes, <laughs> yes, I know Dr. Winter. No, for sure. I mean, yes, you know, indeed. But 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 um, do you think? Do you think the uh, the choir? Uh, we like the praise team. You know, there's some good music out there, uh, but. Man, what do you think? I think there's nothing. I mean, a church. When I think of church, especially Sunday morning, man, I, I'm just. I guess because yes, I'm from the old school, I grew up on that. Man, give me that choir any day, and and just let them sing. Yes, sir. Just just let yes, them sir. do what they do. Let the musicians play. Let the director direct. Let the soloist lead the song, and let the choir just sing. You know, the old folks say to heaven get the new. Just yes, sir. sing the walls down. <laughs> I'm 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 ready to, to witness those days again soon. Yes, where sir. Where we can just go to church and bless the Lord the way we know how. What what tell us that what what are you doing currently? Uh you mentioned that you're at uh, uh Rod Parsley's in there, Columbus, and, and you're doing a lot of things, you're still traveling, you're doing workshops. Tell us what's on the, uh, your agenda coming. I really want to, um, I, I, I want to bring an awareness to musicians aspiring to really make a career out of it. You know, while we are in this bounce back, uh, COVID really, uh, we took a hit when, we, when COVID hit us last year. And I believe within the next year, I believe in my heart that that we we gonna we're gonna come out of it. And will we go back to the way things were? I don't think so, but I believe that it'll be better than it was, mm. you know, than before we was affected by this whole lockdown. You know, during this lockdown, I I was able to launch my business as a uh, S incorporated, you know? And so, um, and what inspired that was all the musicians that were passing away that didn't have health insurance, all the musicians that were passing away that didn't have no 401k plan, no, no retirement plan, their families had to get on social media and post a GoFundMe and Cash App and Zelle to help pay for their services. You know, um, I think everyone needs to be informed how to set that up for yourself. If you're gonna go full time in being a musician and make a career out of it, then, you know, it's time to bring the workshops back. It's time to educate. Just as the, the physician has to go back to school because the practice of medicine continues to advance. I think we need to go back, you know, uh, to the drawing board because, you know, the information has advanced. You know, churches do business now. They pay musicians. And now, you know, I'm doing workshops, you know, um, I'm doing consulting for a lot of churches, you know, and, and in that I show them how to select a musician for their musical needs. You know, now, now they're different levels. You got, I'll start from the top. You got music pastor, you got minister music, you got the music director, you got, then just your, your musicians, your pianist, your organist, your bass, your drummer, you know, and if you're in larger churches, you might have a horn player, you might have a violinist or whatever, 
you know, I can show you how to even set the price of what a church should pay that particular uh, musician. You know, the difference between filling out a W-2 versus a 1099. And if you, if you establish your LLC, you know, um, the, you know, my, my business is Crystal Clarity Productions Incorporated. So I didn't do an LLC, I did an S Incorporation. You know, and where I can now, uh, you know, if anyone wants my services, will they compensate my business? And I pay myself a salary uh, out of my business, you know, and I think all musicians can, this is an opportunity for you to, to do that so that you can set up your own health insurance account, your own uh, 401k plan, and make sure that, uh, uh, you know, you get with a financial consultant to set all of that up for you in case god forbid he calls your name and calls you out of time into eternity all of that stuff is in place you know not only that you know but uh churches are now realizing the importance of having a musician a praise and worship leader you know where they, they pay them for their services because especially in the black church and white churches and other church, Hispanic churches, all as well. Music is a big part of the worship experience. And if it's so big, then we have to show our appreciation by paying them for their services. And so, <clears throat> you know, that, that's kind of where we're uh, getting back to. In the industry, I, I, we'll, we'll bounce back, you know, in the industry as well as in the ministry. You know, I think everyone will bounce back, but it's now how you conduct your business, you know, and, and the awareness of that I want to bring to all singers and musicians, you know, be integral, be on time, make sure you understand what the terms and conditions are before you sign a dotted line. If there's a contract, read the contract, read everything, read it more than once, read it more than twice before you sign it so that you don't get yourself in trouble with the artist, with the promoter, with the IRS or whatever, yes, <laughs> you know, sir. know, know what you're signing because even if you're doing it for Jesus, he ain't going to come and save you. Well, he, <laughs> of course he could perform miracles. He's about the only one that can perform miracles, but he shouldn't have to, if you've done what you were supposed to do. Who so does? that that's the awareness that I want to give to all of the young musicians. You know, we got some musicians who have, bless their heart, they didn't finish high school because they were so gifted, so talented, they didn't go to college, you know, and this is what they wanna do for the rest of their lives. So invest in yourself. Daddy. On, a, on a practical side, Bishop, if you're gonna play keyboard, organ, drums, make sure you're only as good as your instrument. Keep your stuff serviced. Make sure you have cores that don't have shortages in them. And, you know, all of that stuff matters. You know, churches need to keep their organs serviced. Get a right, a good organ technician who yes. knows about that, the Hammond products, the Viacount products, the Nord products, you know, the, the, the Mac products. There's, there's different organs out now. You know, if you play pipe or make, make sure your instrument is in good condition because it's going to affect your sound if it's not. So those, those are the things that I'm trying to get out. Um, I've, I've been producing um, singles, EPs. You, we mentioned Bishop Roger Heston. Um, bishop Heston um, is a bishop right here in the city of Columbus, uh, Ohio. And uh, I'm so blessed and, and humbled that uh, the preachers, the singers, the artists, the musicians have embraced me, uh, having not been from here, not born and raised here, but they've embraced me and Bishop Heston. Uh, we met, we lived on the same street, actually. Uh, he was just a few houses down the street. And um, um, a young man by the name of Anthony McMillan introduced me to him. And uh, his choir reminded me so much of ours uh, when my dad passed, it was small group, big sound. Yes, that was uh, that was them, and so I've had the pleasure of producing two of their three CDs. Uh, that last one, uh, we came to Toledo for Brian Thomas 
and did and featured some songs and it's just been a pleasure. Of course, Bishop Heston can sing himself. So if you got a singing pastor, that music is gonna be off the chain at their yeah. church, you know? Cause of course yeah, he knows what he wants to hear. And so uh, as well as different other artists, you know, uh, locally. And so that that's what I'm doing. I got a full studio set up at home. I can do overdubs, I can do full production right here. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? I hear it, Doc. Don't, don't start. Don't start. Doc. They're going to be saying, all right, turn around there and play something live. You're going to start something, Doc, if you hit that keyboard again. Matter of fact, we probably should just let you do the benediction on the keyboard when we get to that. Yes, sir. I know Philip and them, oh, yeah, man, they're they going to start coming in there. But man, that that yes, that, that is awesome. That is that is uh, yes, indeed, awesome, man. And and I, I value your your words. That that sound, man, is is there. You go. I need to hear the keyboard. <laughs> there it go. <laughs> I knew you gonna start. You done started something. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But 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 I was gonna ask you, but you already answered before I asked you. I was gonna say, give some sound advice to these musicians and and you've already you've already done that man you you well uh, you know what bishop let me add yeah. to that and and, and yeah. because there, there's something that i see that somewhat grieves my heart and that's this spirit of competition and i really oh. want to come against that now you know i mean when you're good you're good you know what i'm yeah. saying and 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 i'm gonna talk to those who know how good they really are it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay to be confident. It's okay to be confident. You need to be confident when, when asked to step up, you know, but you step up, don't step on anyone else, you know, say it again, you know, say it again, doctor. you know, step up, but don't step on. And that, that's, God. that's, that's, that's the message that I want to give that a preach to, to, yes, sir. To the younger generation. It is not about, competition it's about what oh, they call it you again yeah yes yeah, yeah, sir okay <laughs> it's, it's not about competition it's about uh, uh um, compliment not competition but compliment you know yeah. if you can't say nothing nice then don't say nothing at all you know, if, if I see a musician who's overplaying, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll pull them to the side and say, you really got potential, but try not to do this because it, 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 it messes with your anointing. You know, you're, you're anointed. There's a, there's a way to say something that's going to help uh, an individual better themselves, you know, not to make them feel bad, but to, yeah. to make them, to build them up, not to tear them down. You know, and I think that, uh, you know, um, musicians that are featured on this platform, I mean, everybody can just, anyone can just pull out their phones and go to recording something. And, and some of the stuff be funny, you know, but it may hurt that person's feelings. You know, um, help them, don't hurt them. Right, right. You know, step up, don't step on. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and I, want, I want everybody to, to, to do that. You know, I, I respect respect those who have gone before you, you know, uh, in Detroit, in Chicago, you know, yeah. when Bishop Andre Woods walk in the room, organist stand up, you know, and, 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 and respect, I, I, I not worship the person, but respect no. them because they've paid their dues, yeah. you know, well, OG, he don't know what he's doing. No, no, no. Cause back in the day, that sound was significant. Yeah, you know it has advanced now, but you know, but for the most part, you know, your sound twenty years from now may be insignificant, <laughs> and they be and doing like crazy said, stuff we ain't never heard. They're gonna be insignificant. Absolutely, absolutely. So you know that that that's a meaningful uh, 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 assertiveness I'm, I'm using to really get that out to these yeah. young musicians. You know, it's my dream to, to uh, and I'll share this. You know, uh, when, when asked, you know, what is the desires 
of your heart. The Bible says that, that God will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at that word desire and you ask a person, what is it that you actually desire? Most of them will say, well, it's something that I'll never get to do, but I desire it. Well, you know, that for me is to open up a, an organ museum. Oh, wow. I, I don't know if there is one that is existing, but to open up an organ museum and in that museum, the different level, different floors feature different genres where the organ was used, the different organs to have it, uh, having B3 cut in half so that you can see inside that the Leslie speaker and, you know, and how, you know, you, so you have gospel, the gospel floor, you got all of these, all the way back to the Jubilee showcase, black and white gospel videos with James Cleveland and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kurt Carr and, you know, I, I mean, all of these artists who, who play, you know, um, Thomas Whitfield and, and um, Charles Nix and so on and yeah, so forth, yeah. you know, uh, videos so that, 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 uh, that they will never ever be forgotten. Yes. Footage, footage, you know, uh, um, and different uh, um, organists in different genres. That, that's, my, that's my lifelong dream. So to educate the, the musicians that are coming up when I'm long gone and they'll be able to watch uh, organic moments and see. Yeah, man. Um, you know that, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing, I, I mean, if they had YouTube back when I was a shorty, there'd be videos of me, <laughs> you know, cause people that know me know that I've been playing organ so long until I would get on the organ and have to sit on the, the, the thick uh, the phone books, the yellow pages. Cause I, you know, just cause I couldn't reach the keyboard yeah. or my feet would swing cause I couldn't reach the pedals. <laughs> Man. So, you. Well, you know, I mean, but there's no videos of me, you know, um, and, and I've right. not never had even the uh, honor of winning a uh, Stella Award, uh, you know, Dove yeah. Award, but none of that matters, you know. No, um, no, I paid my dues and to God be the glory. I say it all the time. If I could do it again, I'd do it just like I did it. And, and, and what get me, those guys, a lot of them that are on there, uh, if they just told the truth. Yes, sir. About how they developed their musicianship, they've got to admit they've been listening to a window low. Wow. I mean, if they just tell the truth, just come on. And and and, and I, I thank God for your humility that you you mentioned Mike Burrell, you mentioned all so many names, different musicians of our day now. Yes, sir. Uh, and I tell the musicians all the time. Uh, thank you, Reginald Maddox. He said, while you were talking about that, he said, uh, of the difference there, the attitude. He said, "Confidence versus cocky." Yes. You know, some yes. of them are, you know, they yes. look at they they walk in a room and look at you, and may not even know who you are. Absolutely. But but when they find out, then man, I've I've been in rooms when they found out who I was, then they I I, I detected they stop flowing in the anointing and start playing for me. Yes, sir. Trying to impress yes, I mean, Stop trying to impress me. Yes, sir. I'm, I was enjoying you till you switched channels. Absolutely. You know? And uh, that competition thing, man, we got it here in yes, Detroit. I, I, I talk about it all the time to these artists and these musicians, you know, who think they can outplay everybody. You know, I'll be telling them, listen, there's some folk looking at you. Absolutely. You forgot more music than you ever learned. Yes, sir. You'd be surprised. I mean, it's so much mm. talent, giftings around here today. Uh, man, we, we we appreciate that. Okay, Philip, we're gonna we're gonna see what Dr. Lowe gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, man, now talk to us about because a lot of people know you for your music, but you are a gospel preacher. Yes, sir. Now, now let's 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 get that out there now. now okay. <laughs> you, you're not a you're not a a, a a a preacher that plays. You're a musician that preaches. You just both of them, and yes, you sir. found the formula that they flow hand in hand uh, in your ministry. Talk to us about you know you you you're getting ordained, accepting your call, 
and how you, uh, God has blessed you wow. to allow <laughs> uh, the spoken word in your yes, ministry sir. to accompany your music ministry. Okay, so there's a part of this that's, that's going to be a very, very sensitive uh, moment of, tran uh, of uh, transparency. Um, but to answer your question, I got saved when I was eight. I was baptized um, when I was eight. I accepted my call to preach the gospel when I was 10, and I was licensed to preach when I was 10 years old. So I used to preach all the youth, youth day services yeah. <laughs> in, in Chicago. My father, who was my pastor, died when I was 13. And I often say that I became a grown man at 13. Wow. And I learned life lessons, making a lot of mistakes, making bad decisions, you know, uh, about finances, about just life, you know. And um, I grieved by channeling all of my grief and energy into the music. So, what people thought I was just developing boy wonder on the West side, I was actually grieving. Mm. Wow. And the music would be the only thing that would calm my grief. So I would just close myself into the music. Having worked with all of the different pastors and they were good pastors, they preached good, you know, but they took more interest in the musician than the preacher. And so many times I was employed, this is that transparency moment, I was employed, but I wasn't pastor. Ah. Uh. Okay, let me say it again. Many times coming up, I was employed, but I was not pastored. So wow. my preaching developed just by pure observation, just watching the preacher, listening to how he studied, listening to how he, you know, executed homiletics, hermeneutics, you know, and things like my dad was gone. So nobody stepped in that void and said, you are preaching. They would even prophesy to me only musical things. They would never see the preacher in me. Wow. You know, and, and the way I was raised, music is your gift, but preaching is your calling. Preaching is the assignment. Music God uses to attract people. Preaching God uses to win their souls in and keep them. Preaching and teaching brings them in to the kingdom, you know. And so um, it had its advantages because, be because I was a preacher, I knew how to accompany a preacher and became uh, musically one of the, you know, a preaching preacher's best friend. I know when he's teaching in introduction, when he's going into, you know, he's shifting, cutting across the field. I know when he's getting ready to tune up, when he's getting ready to close, you know, and I knew how to accompany because I'm a preacher and, and, and a student of the word of God. And so when I would preach, I, I tried not to be a musician that preaches but a preacher that plays. Case in point, you know, um, I didn't want to be one of them that would just cliche you to death, you know, when you get up and preach or just tell your testimony. You know, if God called me to preach, then I got to have something to say, you know, and, and uh, having worked with a lot of pastors, you know, many of them, you know, they didn't know. And I mean, this is your church, so... <laughs> Either you see it or you don't. And, and some either didn't see it or they saw it and 
they ignored it. They ignored the preacher in me, you know, but uh, to the glory of God, you know, I've learned watching Bishop Marvin L. Winans and Marvin Sapp and Pastor John P. Key and Milton Brunson and Clay Evans, you know, and James Cleveland, all in the music field, Pastor Bishop Hezekiah Walker, how they transition, you know, Bishop Paul S. Morton, you know, Pastor Smokey Norfolk, and how they learn to balance the two. Where you walk in a church and people want to call you to the organ when and, and they almost disrespect and dishonor your calling to preach. Even, even here on social media, when I post videos of me playing, the, the response is overwhelming. When I post videos of me preaching, not as much, you know? And I just say, well, whenever my time comes, you know, God will, he, you know, Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. It comes from God. And so I have to stand on that and know. So I was licensed to preach when I was 10. I was ordained to pastor in 1997 after I produced the Worked It Out CD uh, for Ricky Dillard. I got called to pastor Acme Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, South Side. And I had to be ordained to pastor. My pastor was my father-in-law, Dr. Marvin Eugene Alexander Jr. Preaching preacher. Oh my good God of mine. And man, still preach. And he ordained me to preach and to pastor. I was already serving under him in Christian education and at the church and in uh, 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 licensing deacons and ordaining deacons and ministers. So, you know, I've had those practices. I've actually pastored three churches. Mm. So I have about six years of pastoral experience, you know, and one day I do believe that there is a congregation that God will have me oversee and he'll open the door and to the glory of God, we'll be able to pour into them everything that God has given me. So that's my story in ministry. So I, I still function as a pastor. I just, I just did a baby christening last week. I do weddings. I, I perform yeah. funerals, uh, mm -hmm. uh, burial, uh, uh, you know, um, all of that I do without a congregation. Yeah. You know, but the times are changing now. You know, some churches are shut down. Churches we're in a day where churches are going to start merging and they'll need pastors and perhaps... Yeah, uh, the Lord may open that door and give me an opportunity to function fully in full time ministry. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I, man, I'm telling you that 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 another awesome uh, part of your story and your journey, uh, and and we certainly appreciate that moment of transparency. Yes, sir. And, and people need to know; they need to hear, because too many times they look at us. And they just take for granted, you know, that we were we were given a pass on testing trials. And yes, sir. Uh, no, no, listen, Not at all. we got some horror stories too. Yes, sir. <laughs> that we definitely can can share, you know. And I appreciate that about, you know, I, I too. I mean, when it comes to making decisions and and uh, bad choices, I mean, we've been there, man. Yes, sir. But 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 God, God, uh, he he kept us in the midst of and through it all, and we're here to talk about it. Yes, that, sir. That's what I'm excited about. We we're here to tell about it, and I just believe that um, uh, what God is going to do for us, you included, and so many others. I mean, we got a lot of work to do yes, still indeed. to this day. To, to uh, uh, really help influence this generation that that's behind us, and hopefully they will hear uh, uh, Dr. Wonder Law. I'm I'm praying that they're going on YouTube or come on these yes, Facebook sir. pages and just take the time to listen yes. to this live, to this interview that that we're having tonight, to gain some insight. Yes, you sir. know, 
and and to hear uh, the man that they see on Facebook on organic moments and and uh, be influenced by by your testimony. Now, that, that, yes. That's my prayer that they will get it. Uh, so thank you, Reginald. Thank you, Philip and uh, Shelly and everybody that's chiming in. I mean, uh, if I missed you, uh, the thing just keep moving. But praise yes, God sir. for that. Well, listen, Doc. I I have been blessed by this. Uh, you taking the time. And uh, uh, I want to have a word of prayer. And then yes. would you be so kind to close us out with a I'll verse of course or something as we leave <laughs> the airway? So, Philip, all y'all, y'all hang on. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Lowe is going to bless us tonight. But I want to pray for you, my friend. And because uh, I believe what's coming is better than what's been. And, Indeed. Uh, like the Bible say, the latter shall be greater Every than the former. So yes, let's pray. Sir. Father, we thank you now for our dear brother, Dr. Wendell Lowe. Thank we you. thank you for his gift. We thank you for his life, God, the anointing that's upon him even now. We yes. thank you for what you've done in him, with him, for him, and even through him in the past. And God, we bless your name for the things that you're going to do. And thank we you, pray Lord. Psalms 90, 17 upon his life. And let mm. the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him and yes. establish the work of our hands, your hands upon him. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it. So, Father, yes. we pray that whatever he puts his hands to, you Thank will you, cause Lord. it to prosper. Let these days that are before him, God, be the best days of his life. Enlarge his territory. Give mm. him the desire of his heart, God, whatever it might be. Now we pray your blessings upon him. Bless him spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially, God. Uh, bless yes. him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Uh, continue to bless him with more wisdom and insight and revelation, God, of who you are and your word, that he might minister to the lost uh, yes. all over the world, God. And we pray, God, that you will bless him continually for even the future plans that he have the plans that you have for him. For we know I have not seen nor yes. ear heard the wonderful, great, and marvelous things that you have prepared for this chosen vessel, Dr. Wendell Lowe. So we thank you for him, and this is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. Well, Hallelujah. doctor, listen, man, I appreciate you yes, so sir. much. And, thank you. Uh, I'm like Paul. I'm like Paul in Romans chapter one. I'm a debtor. I'm in your debt, Doc, <laughs> oh. uh, for taking this time to share with us. Now, yes, man, sir. if you'd be so kind. Listen, friends, let me thank all of you who joined us tonight. If you missed any part of this, go back and see it a little bit later in its entirety. It'd be on Bishop Andreas Wood's uh, YouTube channel. And please subscribe to the channel and bless us and be a part of all that we're doing here. Well, uh, this is Bishop Andre Woods. I want to command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. And our good friend, Dr. Lowe, is going to take us out musically on yes, tonight. Sir. Bless you, my friend. Thank you. You too. Let me see.
Thank you, my friend. Bless you all. Gracious. Thank you and good night. We'll talk, man. We'll be in touch. I'll see you at the finish line. All right. Love you, brother. Love you too.